Hello, hello, hello. God bless you. You are welcome to this edition of the Prophetic Hour. We bless the holy name of God. I'm so happy and so excited to be able to come to this medium so that we can speak together in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are welcome to this edition of the Prophetic Hour where you receive words that would encourage your soul and lift up your spirits. Words that would encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. The God we are serving is a mighty God and this is going to begin to bless, increase and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the morning. Welcome to everyone. For those who have been waiting for us to come on, we do appreciate you. God will bless, increase and prosper you. You continue to arise and shine, prosper and succeed marvelously and mightily in the name of Jesus. This is your moment. This is your season. This is your hour for a great breakthrough. And I know that for the fact that you are watching, even right now, God will prove himself even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. So you are all welcome. God will bless you. We, we increase and prosper you in Jesus' name. To this um, prophetic hour, determined, and, um, determined for a change, part six, we bless the rhythm of God. That means that while we have gone for six weeks on this topic, we bless God. And I believe that out there you have all been blessed. Blessed and God will continue to work wonders and miracles even in your lives and death. My name is Chris, Pastor Chris of Body of Christ Center, a church I pastor my wife, Pastor Funke. It's a church where Christ Himself reigns supreme and lives are touched and changed and transformed. And you watching is not by accident, but by it's by divine appointment. I know that this God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and death. You are all welcome, welcome, welcome. You are welcome. A big welcome to everyone out there. We do appreciate you and God will bless, increase, and prosper. You. Don't forget that we are on. Let's go put that. We are on two platforms, as you can see. We are on Facebook and we are on YouTube. That is our Facebook page, as you can see on the screen right now. Please kindly share, get sharing, sharing, sharing on share, 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 share on your Facebook page. Share within your timeline. Also share among the groups you belong to, and God will bless, increase, and prosper. Let's get it as wide and as far as possible. And I know that this God will begin to work His wonders and miracles, even in every life and destiny even right now in the name of Jesus. So you are all welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get sharing. God will bless, increase and prosper. We are also on YouTube. That's our YouTube address as you can see on the screen. You know what? You can also send impressions to your friends on our YouTube channel. Let them join in and God will bless them and bless you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. It is well with your soul. Sister Palas, welcome. God bless you. Sister Farah, thank you. Welcome. Sister Abis, Abisola, welcome. Sister Krista, God bless you. Sister Naughty, God bless you. Sister Tina, God bless you. Mommy Adeshola, God bless you. Sister da, da, um, Dakar, God bless you. Sister Olam, may God bless you. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus. We do appreciate you for coming on. Daddy Adeshola, God bless you, sir. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. God will bless you, sir. We appreciate you. Sister Bukit, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. God will bless you all. I do appreciate you for sticking and staying on. And God will bless everyone mightily. Sister Dottu, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. Sister Helene, God bless you. Nice to see you. God will bless everyone mightily and marvelously. In the name of, please let's invite all our friends, everyone you know out there. Let's invite them, let them come on, let them be part of this because I know that tonight God will work His wonders and miracles even in your lives. And so, get as many people on board from far and near every continent you know, people who are on Facebook, invite them far and near your families, far and near, invite them. God begin to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies. And so, once again, you are all welcome. This is your season to arise and and shine and I know you begin to arise and shine and prosper and succeed marvelously and mightily in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, we bless you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor, marvelous King, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, the end. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the grace to be here again in your presence where there's fullness of joy. We bless you, worship you, praise you, adore you, honor you because you are the King, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for giving us the grace to see the month of November. This is the third day in this month, the first Tuesday in this 11th month. Mighty Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. 
We bless and worship and praise and adore you. Marvelous King, there is none like unto you. There is none besides you. I accept our thanks in Jesus' name. My dear Father, every sin, love, forgive, just send your power into our mission. Just the Holy Ghost begin to work your wonders mightily in the name of Jesus. Touch every soul that is watching. My dear Father, touch us body, soul, and spirit. We come against the work of the enemy. We bind them. We cast it to hell in the air, in the sky, in the moon, in the sun, in the water. We bind them. We cast it to hell in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost begin to work your wonders. Let your name be glorified. Do a new work. Touch us, Lord. We cover ourselves, this program, the guided connection with the blood of Jesus. Have your will, Lord, and let your name be glorified. Father, we honor and we bless you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name, we pray. Amen, 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 amen. I hear this word. I don't know who God is talking to. I know there's somebody that's what God is talking to. And I hear this word that he has not forgotten about you. I hear him say loud and clear, he has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about you. If you know and you believe he has not forgotten about you, just type it Tap now that he has remembered me. He has remembered me. He has remembered me. Or I have been remembered. Whichever one. He has remembered me. Or I have been remembered. Whichever one. Because I hear that voice loud and clear. I should tell you that he has not forgotten about you. And God begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your life and destiny. And Professor Fumi, welcome on board. Sister Lizzie Shaw, welcome on board. God will bless, increase and prosper you. Amen and amen. As you're joining in, God will bless. Please, as you're joining, please share, share, share. Share on your Facebook page. Share on your timeline. Very, very important. Share within the groups you belong to. Let's spread this as wide and as far as possible. And I know that this God will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies and you continue to arise and shine prosper and succeed in the name of Jesus. The plan and purpose of God for your life will definitely come to pass and will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. He has remembered me for good. God has remembered you. And to tap that out, guess what? He will begin to remember you like never before, mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Because the God we are serving is a mighty God. And this God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work for you in the name of Jesus. This is your season. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. I hear God. I believe that God wants to make it prophetic tonight. Very prophetic. I hear God say to some, I don't know who that person is, but as soon as we enter November, hmm, that person thought within their heart that I hope it will not be too late for me. Hmm. I hope it will not be too late for me. You thought it in your heart. You thought it in your heart. As soon as you entered November, this 11th month, you thought, hmm, one month left for this year to go. Hmm. I hope it's not too late for you. Mm. And God is trying to tell you that it is not too late for you. He will make a way for you. He will make a way for you. Mm. If that is you, you thought in your heart that I hope it's not too late for me. Tap it out. He has made a way. He has made a way. He has made a way. And this God will begin to make ways for you. You know, He's a God that can make ways where there's no way. When the Bible says that if your enemy comes to, against us one way, if the enemy comes against us one way, he will flee seven ways. Can you imagine God making seven ways for the enemy to flee away from you? So if this God can make the enemy flee from you for seven ways, how much more would he make a way for you where there is no way? He will make a way for me. Don't, don't think that it's too late. It's not too late for you. He's telling me to tell you that he will make a way for you. He will make a way for you. And he will work wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. You know, as I said, we can see comments on both Facebook and also on YouTube. And God will bless. I can see the great man of God on YouTube, um, um, Reverend John Shuman. God bless you, man of God. I do appreciate you for joining us. God will bless you and prosper you. So you see, God is working wonders. So we can see comments on both YouTube and Facebook and God will bless you. This is your season to arise and shine and you shall arise and shine in the name of of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I see another thing. You know, I'm supposed to go into the world, but I see another thing. I I hear God say that He has turned your disappointment to appointment. Disappointment to appointment. Disappointment to appointment. And you see, that is a turnover. 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 Now, if you want God to turn things over for you, whether from sorrow to happiness, from disappointment to appointment, from down to going up, just tap your turn over. Turn over, turn over, turn over. As you turn over, God will begin to turn things over for you for the best. No matter what it is, even if you're in the valley, guess what? It will take you to the mountain. That's turn over, turn over, turn over, turn over. God is walking one. I see that hand, you know, spinning around. Turn over, turn over, turn over. If that is you, tap 
water turn over, turn over. God will begin to turn things over for you, even right now, marvelously and mightily. And when you say, Pastor Chichi, Margaret, you are welcome in Jesus' name. BOSM Youth, you are welcome in Jesus' name. God begin to work His wonders and miracles, even in every life in the name of This is your season to prosper and to make it, and you will make it in the name of Jesus. I say once again, this is your season to prosper and you make it, and you shall make it mightily and marvelously in the name of of you know what I see again? I see a big truck with parcel. I see a big truck with parcel. I say, what is this God? And God says that we shouldn't think that because the year is going to an end that he wouldn't do that which he has promised to do. <laughs> it's a God that promises and never fails. Even at the last second, the 31st of December 2020, even if it's just one minute to midnight to go into 2021, guess what? God will still bring it to pass. <laughs> If that is you, you know that every promise that God has made to you this year will come to pass. Even though it hasn't come to pass, just tap it out. He's a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. God says he's going to bring it to pass. He's a promise keeper. He will bring those those things that I promised you. God is not mad that he should lie. That's not mad that should repair. He's a promise keeper. And he'll begin to bring those things to pass, even in your life right now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. There's somebody again and said, I believe that God wants to us to flow in the prophetic tonight. Even though I have, you know, we have things to say, we to say it, we to combine everything together. But but there's somebody, you see somebody from your town, from your village, every now and then in your dream. And anytime you see that person from your town, your village, guess what? Things don't work out the way it's supposed to work out. When you are believing God for something or trusting God for something, that person will appear in your dream and that thing will not work out. But today I see the fire of the Holy Ghost destroying that entity. That entity has been destroyed. Their work has been destroyed and be consumed. You know the Bible says about God is a consuming fire. Now if that is you, just tap it at consuming fire or just fire or the flame, the flame, emoji flame, 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 fire, consuming fire. And God himself begin to consume it even right now in the you, are, you see somebody from your town, from your village, every now and then, and when that person appears to you, things don't work out. God is consuming their works. Just tap it out, consuming fire. When you tap that consuming fire out, you will go forth and consume their powers, authority, and destroy their plans and purposes, and then you'll be free. Great things will take place, even in your lives and destinies, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We're going to have your way. Let your name be glorified. We honor and we bless you. We praise and we adore you because you are the Lord. We're going to have your way. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Now, which one are you? I see four options, four options. You will write which one you are now. You can be the four, you can be two, you can be one. You will write you will write the one you believe you are or the category you belong to. Now, category one, are you a king? Category two, are you a queen? Category three, three, are you, are you a, a priest? Category four, are you a Levite? Which one are you? That's the four categories that God revealed to me now. And God is saying that it's special people in those categories, but you will declare which category you belong to. Are you a king? Are you a queen? Are you a Levite? Or are you a priest? Which one are you? Are you a king? Are you a queen? Are you a Levite? Or are you a priest? Those four are very, very important. You know what a king is? Kingship, rulership. You know what a priest is? Talking and dealing with things with God. You know what a queen is? A queen stands also as a commander and you know what a Levite is. A Levite uh, is those who are in the service of God. So which one are you? Are you a king? Are you a queen? Are you a priest? Or are you a Levite? You will declare which one you are and this God will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies even right now in the name of Jesus. This is your season to arise and shine and you begin to arise and shine in the name of Jesus. We bless the Holy God. Now, if you want to know more about us, about Pastor Funke and myself, about the church, about what we believe in, that's our email, sorry, website on the screen. That's our website on the screen. That's our website. You know what? You can visit our website. Tell you everything you, know, you need to know about Pastor Funke, about myself, about the church, about what we believe in, and God will begin to bless, increase, and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of of Jesus. And don't forget, this program is very soon for the very first time. This program comes up every Thursday, every Tuesday at 
9 p.m. Every Tuesday at 9 p.m. That's GMT time. Every Tuesday at 9 p.m. That's UK time. And God will bless, increase, and prosper. So everybody who is on board, you are welcome. God will bless, increase, and prosper you. God will honor you. The plan and purpose of God for your life shall definitely come to pass and shall be fulfilled mightily and marvelously in the name of so now let's go into the word of god let's go into the word thank you lord i see a big book being opened i see a big book being opened and i see on the book hmm, i see on the book those that god wants to remember before the end of this year those that god wants to remember or those that God will remember before the end of this year. Those that God will remember before the end of this year. Those that God will remember before the end of this year. If you are, you believe and you want your name to be added to those that God will remember before the end of this year, just tap it out. Add my name. 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 Just feel like add my name or my name is added, whichever one. Add my name or my name is added, whichever one. And your name shall be added. And I tell you, before the end of this year, on this same program, you will have a great testimony. Testimony of the great things that God is doing and God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Once again, you are welcome to the prophetic hour where we receive words that would encourage our soul and lift up your spirit. Words that would encourage our soul and lift up our spirit. Words that would encourage our soul and lift up our spirit. And I believe that this God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in every life and destiny even right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. It is well with your soul. You know, I was when I was listening to the news today and I saw the uh, flood, I saw what happened in Turkey, I saw all this, I said, ah, this God is wonderful. And these are the things that God told us at the beginning of this year. I know there was a small clip that we showed about the prophecies of 2020, 2020. And these things are still coming to pass. You know, because of this COVID thing and because of the election in you know, some countries, you know, all these other news have I've, I've, I've just been on the bottom of the ladder. But things are happening out there. There's some place where the flood will just come and wipe away the whole, a whole village and there will be no access to that village and people are dying. The floods everywhere. You know, there's an earthquake that happened somewhere and all this, all this is what God has been telling us. So you know, why am I saying this? God does not keep us in the dark. If I'm not, um, if I'm not played by that video, I think it's on our Facebook page or our YouTube talking about the Prophet, prophecies of 2020 is still there. You see it there, and these things are still coming to pass. These things are still coming to pass, and I believe. And why am I saying this? For you and I to know. Even this COVID, you know what? In that prophecy, there was a word that said that um, there's a disease that will come out and spread all over the world. And the reason why I'm confident is that we know that for God to have told us, He has kept us, and no evil will come near our dwelling. That's why I'm saying this. No evil will come near our dwelling. So, where there's lockdown, I'm not saying, be careful, please. Where there's lockdown or no lockdown, where there's freedom, or no freedom, know for sure <coughs> excuse me, that Christ is for us. He will keep us. He has said in his word, he will not allow the disease of Egypt to come near us. So the disease of this world shall never come near us. We are free in the name of Jesus. I am fully covered. I am fully covered and protected. I am fully covered and protected. You know, when you buy a car and you do the insurance, they will tell you you are fully covered and fully protected. Now, our insurance is the blood of Jesus. Our insurance is the name of Jesus. So that's why I tap it out. I am fully covered and protected. I am fully covered and protected protected. And what's our cover? What's our protection? The blood of Jesus. There's nothing as powerful, as cogent, as strong as the blood of Jesus. And this blood will begin to protect us and continue to protect us mightily and marvelously, mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Once again, we are welcome to the edition of Prophetic Hour, where we say words that will encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. Now, let's open our Bible to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 28. But I'll just read verses 21 and 22 for our discussion today. Matthew, 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 Matthew 15, 21 and 22. If you have your Bibles, you can open it. Please open your Bibles. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 22. The Bible says that, And Jesus went away from there, 
and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. 22. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Have mercy on me, son of David. Have mercy. I declare and decree that Lord will have mercy on everyone watching right now in the name of Jesus. I say once again, Lord will have mercy on everyone watching right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. As I go into all, go with us, speak to us. Let your name be glorified. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Thank you. I see a knife. I say, ah, what has this now got to do? I see a knife. And I see a big cake. A big cake. And I see that as the angels were cutting the cake, the cake is doesn't finish, it doesn't end, it doesn't run out. The more they are cutting, the more it increases. I'm saying, what is this God? And God says that it's blessing us. It's time for us to be celebrated. There are many people watching, he has, he has, they are going to be celebrated. They are going to be celebrated. If you believe you are amongst the people who will be celebrated, because I see everyone watching going to get a piece of their own cake, There's a slice of that cake. I see everybody going to get a slice. Everybody's coming and funny enough everybody's having the same style, the same the same the same size of slice. No different nobody's getting a bigger one than the other. But it's the same just as the manner. The Bible talks about the manner that when people went out, those who took more, by the time they got home it was just one homer. And those who took less, by the time they got home it became one homer, as you know. So this is a, a perfect slice of cake whereby it's the same size. I said, what is this God? And God says he wants us, he's going to place us in a place where we are going to be celebrated. If that is you, type it out. If you believe you're going to have your piece of cake, if you believe you're going to be a part and parcel of that, just type it out. Celebrations, celebrations, celebrations. Cele because celebrations is your portion, will be your portion, even right now in the name of the celebrations. We, celebration will be your portion right now in the name of the, and one, one way by you by which you can receive that you just type it down celebrations celebration celebration and if you type it down it shall be yours in the name of jesus amen now you have been talking about determined for a change determine how determined are you for a change change is very important i'm talking about change for good change for good change is very very important in a life and god is the one that brings change if you can trust him if you can believe him if you can if you can look unto him the author and finisher of our faith then change would come our way you must be determined to you must be determined in life for a change. Determination is the drive behind change. The more determined you are, then your change is guaranteed. I pray and I declare and I decree that the grace that will that will make our change come will receive it right now in the name of I'm going to talk about the steps that you and I need to take for our change to come. It must be something you must be determined for. It must be something that you must be ready for. It must be something that you must grab with both hands. And all these points, all our discussions are taken from the book, it's taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, 21 to 28. But we are, we are still on 21 to 22. And the first point that you and I need to take for us to get our change is let go let go of the past let go of of let go. what are you willing to let go what are you willing to adjust what are you willing to change you must be able to let go let go of some issues let go of some things that are taking place in your life and when you begin to let go that change will come let go of your old ways let go of that of this of that because in the beginning when you read uh, Matthew 15 1 to 20 it talks about just letting go after you spoken to the Pharisees, it, that is, it is what comes out of a man that defies a man, not what goes in a man that defies him. Then he let go, he moved. And then number two, talking about the process, now if you missed any of this, don't worry, you can go to our Facebook page or YouTube channel and click on Determined for a Change, Determined for a Change, and then when you click on it, you can begin to watch parts one, two, three, and four, and God will bless you, this is part six, and God will bless you 
in the name of Jesus. And number two, we said time out. Every one of us, we need time out. We need time out. Time out to rethink. Time out to refire. Time out to refresh. Time out to regain. And I, when we're talking about, I ask, what is your own re? What is your own re? What are you re? What are you reading that will bring change? There must be time out. You must have to. Uh, okay, now for example, now, now in Britain, in UK. No, in England, let me say England. In England, in England, there's going to be a lockdown from Thursday by the grace of God. Now, that's a time out for you and I. Time out for us to think and take time out. You know, thank God for that this time out is forced. Some people have never taken time out in their lives. But time out is now around the corner and it's a time for you to think. The Bible says that and Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Ty and Sidon. It was outside Israel, so he took time out. He just took time out to rest, to recover, to recuperate so that I can be on fire again. He did he wasn't expecting to go to this time and sit down and perform a miracle. No, it was like a time out. And then number three is that after the time out, after the time out, what can you behold? What can you see? After the pause. Now you need to plan strategically that this one month or or oh, yeah, about one month of lockdown in this England. What are you strategizing? What do you want to have? What outcome do you want after the lockdown is over? What do you want to achieve? You need to behold and see clearly the things you want to do, so that by the time the lockdown is over. You have things to look back and say, ah, God, I achieved this in week one, day one, week two, week three, week four. I achieved this. Now I'm a better person. You must be able to be whole. And then number four, we spoke about out of the shell. Out of the shell. The Bible talks at, and behold, in verse 22, a, a Canaanite woman from that region came out. She came out. She came out. Now, are you ready to come forth? Or are you still hiding or are you waiting? What are you waiting for? It's time for you to comfort. This woman came forth. Even though she had issues, she still came forth. She did not allow her issues to tie her down. She did not allow the past to tie her down. She did not allow the disappointment to tie her down. What she, she came out. She came out of that shell. I pray the Lord will give us that grace to come out of whatever shell has held us down in the name of Jesus. And then, number six, we did last week. Number five, sorry, number five, pity party. The Bible says that she came out and she was crying. Now, last week when we began to speak about this, we spoke about crying, that pity party. Now, is your cry for pity? Is it a procreative one or is it a productive one? Now, this woman's crying was a productive one because she was able to catch the attention of Jesus. But the most crying was productive, productive one, but because he was able to catch the attention of Jesus. Um, King Ezekiah's own was productive because he was able to catch the attention of God and God sent the, uh, the prophet back, back for Isaiah, go back and tell him I've added 15 years to his year. Now, when we want to cry out to God, let it be a productive one. Don't just cry for crying and sing. Make sure you have a purpose and plan and specific prayer point that, Lord, this is what I want and God will do it for you mightily and marvelously in the name of Today, we are going on we are going on number number six, I believe. Number six, fight the oppression. I love this one. Fight the oppression. Fight the oppression. Now the Bible says in verse twenty-two, all what we are talking about is you see is is showing if you are determined for a change. If you let go, that means you are determined for a change. If you Create time out for yourself. You are determined for your change because by the time you come out, you behold greater things. And when you behold greater things, you come out of your shell. You come out of hiding. You come out of that waiting period. And then you are ready for a change. And then when you come out of that shell, you are not looking for a pity party around anywhere. That's what that woman, she was not looking for a pity party anywhere. And the Bible says that she, and behold, that's verse 22 of Matthew 15. And behold, a Kenneth woman from that region came out and was crying, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Now, this woman was fighting against that oppression. She not that allowed the oppression to overwhelm her. She not fold her hands and say, what will be, would be. This is I've got. You see, when oppression is coming your way, you don't just fold arms. 
Now, the Bible talks about um, the Israelites when they were oppressed under the hand of Pharaoh. When they, they cried out, Oh Lord, deliver us. Oh Lord, save us. And how do we know the cry? Because God said, He told me, I have heard the cry of my people Israel. I have heard and seen how they are oppressed. Why? Because they fought against that oppression. What are you doing against that oppression? Whatever has held you down, what are you doing or what have you done against that oppression? Are you just folding your arms? Are you allowing that oppression to have its way over your life? Or are you battling and fighting against that oppression? Say, oppression, you shall not stand my way. Oppression, I am pulling you down. You disgrace, I am pulling you down. We must be able to fight against the oppression that has come up against us. Hmm. You have a role to play. Come out fighting. What are you doing? You have a role to play. You need to come out fighting. What are you doing? This woman, she came out fighting. The Bible says her daughter was severely oppressed by a demon. But she came out fighting. She said, I am not giving up. I am not losing up. I know people have tried. I know they've held that down. I know I've been to places. But you know what? I need to fight the oppression. I need to fight against it. Even though I may not have power over this demon. But I know someone that has power over this demon. And I'm going to fight the oppression of this demon. I will not stay with this demon. You know, the Bible says that she left the girl in the house. She not been the girl with her. She left the girl. We don't know if she left the girl with somebody. But she was determined in her heart. I am going to fight this oppression. How did determined and are you from scale zero to ten how you tap it out how determined are you to fight the oppression you always have bad dreams how determined are you to fight against that bad dreams you always lose something how determined are you to fight that oppression of this thing you always come in last when they say come and get something by the time you get there it is over how determined are you to fight that oppression or are you a storyteller telling story about about the oppression in your life and doing nothing about it. How determined the Bible says that she was her daughter was severely oppressed by a demon. But guess what? She was fought or she fought against that oppression that was coming against her life. How determined are you fighting against that oppression? Because oppression will come. If I tell you there will be no oppression, I am lying. Oppression will come. Before you got married, you are saying, Lord, hey, husband, wife, come. Now, husband and wife has come. You are now married. You are settled. Hey, Lord, my marriage. Hey, Lord, my children. Hey, Lord, accommodation. Hey, Lord, money. Now, each step, you have to fight against the oppression. And let me tell you something. If you fight against an oppression and you have won, thank God, be ready for another higher level of oppression. Oppression is in levels. The higher you want to go, the higher the oppression. The higher you want to become in life, the higher the oppression. The more determined you, you are for a change, the higher the oppression. You must be able and be determined to fight against the oppression. What has come to oppress you? Many times when you go to bed, you feel something pressing you down, putting you down, tying you down. What are you doing? Are you just going to say, mm, gee, gee, and you wake up and you sleep again? Or are you going to wake up and fight against that oppression? You need to fight up. You need to rise and fight against that oppression. By prayer, by fasting, by declaring the word, by reading the word of God, by going to church, by being on the altar of God. You need to fight that oppression that has risen up again you. Because if you don't do anything, the Lord will just be looking. You need to move first and then God will move on your behalf. Look at David when they were oppressed by Goliath. David went and said, I will fight against him. He took David in the Bible said that, and the Lord spoke to David and the Lord said, that, Oh, David, my servant, arise, go and fight. I will be with you. The Bible did not say that David had a voice, but he had that confidence that this is oppression. I must fight against this oppression. And he stood up and he took five smooth stones and he went across the brook and he sling the first stone and that first stone, the first stone only remember he still had four in his pocket in, on his bag, but that first stone the Lord guided and made strong and he struck Goliath in the forehead and he sank into his forehead we don't know how far away can you imagine, we know because when you sling a stone, 
the momentum and the kinetic energy is very strong at the beginning, the point of origin. But the further it goes, the weaker it becomes. The further it goes, the weaker it becomes. So we can, the projector is supposed to have fallen down before meeting Goliath. But because God was in that stone, the hand of God was carrying that stone. The momentum increased, the kinetic energy behind and in that stone increased. That increased so much that it was able to sink into the forehead of that Goliath and it died. But what happened? David stood up and fought against that oppression. Are you going to stand up and fight against that oppression? Jerubab Gideon stood up and fought against the oppression of the Midianites. When you look at the Bible again, Deborah with the army, I forgot his name, the army man, they fought against the oppression of against Israel. You see, people are always rising and fighting. When there was a time that Abraham, the Bible says that they took Lot away and everything that Lot had, and Abraham fought, he stood up and fought against the oppression and released Lot and others, and got so much that when he met the king of Mercedes, uh, Salem, the Mercedes, king Mercedes, or something like that, uh, they said he wanted to give him, he gave him the tenth of the tithe of what he had got. No, the tenth of what he had got, that's the tithe of what he had got him. Abraham fought against the oppression. What am I saying? Are you ready as a child of God to fight against that oppression that has faced you? Or are you just folding your arms and saying what you will be will be? <coughs> Excuse me. Imagine, let's look at this story this way. Imagine this woman hearing that Jesus was in town. By chance, Jesus was supposed to be on break. He had redrawn. He was there. He had a time out there because he did not go to ground because he, was, he said, I am only sent to the house of Israel. So he would do, go in there for a break, for a time out. But this woman heard of it. And she stood up to fight against this oppression. That enough, until you stay yourself, enough is enough. Somebody type that out, enough is enough. Until you stand up and tell yourself, enough is enough. Enough of this oppression. Enough of this suppression. Enough of this borrowing. Enough, enough, enough. Guess what? Things will not change. You must be determined. I remember many, many years ago, my wife and myself, about almost 25, 26 years ago, when we bought a car, the first car we bought, we bought together, and the time came whereby we didn't have money for petrol. Each time we go and meet a friend, give us ten pounds, give us five pounds, borrow us this, borrow us that, and the person would give us we return the money. But a time came when I told my wife, Pastor Fugazi, look, enough is enough. Let's pray against the spirit of borrowing. And do you know that we prayed against it, it was cancelled, and from that moment we never borrowed again. Why? Because we stood against the oppression of the enemy. You need to stand up against the oppression against you. Everybody is facing an oppression. It doesn't matter whether you are a bishop or archbishop or you are a son of God or a child of God or a king or a queen or a priest or a Levite. Oppression would arise. Because of that, what are you going to do against the oppression that rises against your life? Are you just going to fold your arms? If you are really determined for a change, you will stand up and fight against that oppression. I say you will stand up and fight against that oppression. All through the Bible, you can see that people began to fight against the oppression. When they came against Joshua, he rose up, he prayed, he fasted, he sought the face of God. In the end, he fought against the oppression. He went, and by the time he got there, they were all dead bodies. Why? Because he was ready to fight against the oppression. How ready are you to fight against that oppression? Because if you don't fight against it, nobody will fight on your behalf. You have to fight. Don't say that, ah, my mother is a prayer warrior. She's praying for me somewhere. Oh, I have a pastor somewhere. He's praying or she's praying for me somewhere. You pray for yourself. You know, Christianity is DIY. Do it by yourself. Do it yourself. Christianity is DIY. Pray by yourself. Pray by yourself. Pray for yourself. You got PFY. P yeah, pray for yourself. Yes, somebody, uh, PFY. Pray for yourself. You must fight the oppression. You must fight. Everything in this world, you don't get with ease. Jacob fought. He fought the oppression of Laban. He had worked for 14 years. He only worked. He worked for 7 years. He got the wrong girl. He got the wrong girl. And then now, you are saying that credit, credit has been in the Bible. Now, they gave him credit. Credit of Rachel. 
work for me for another seven years. I will give you credit in advance, but work, work, work. And he worked in another seven years, making 14 years. He had nothing to show for these 14 years he has spent. All he had to show was Leah and Rachel and their, 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 their nurses that he married and children. Nothing else, nothing else. He was still under the, 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 the power and authority of Laban until he woke up that when will I provide for my family and for the next six years he fought the oppression guess what Laban cheated him ten times he still fought Laban took all what belonged to him he still fought Laban cheated him he still fought Laban went to divination he still fought he did not give any excuse he fought the oppression of Laban against his life and what happened in the end he came out with great substance. The sultan was so great that even that even when Esau saw him, Esau could not believe. Esau that had come with 400 men. In the end, he relaxed and they hugged themselves and they cried and cried and cried. In the end, Esau had to leave because the land could not contain Esau and Jacob's substance. Esau had to leave and go to another place and they became the Edomites. They had to leave. Why? Because he fought for his he fought against the oppression. What are you, my question tonight is that, and I want you to answer, what are you doing against that oppression that has risen up against you? What are you doing regarding the oppression that has risen up against you? I want you to answer me, everyone answer me. What are you doing regarding that oppression that has risen up against you? What are you doing? You must fight the oppression. You must fight. Stop giving excuses. It is COVID. That is why. What an excuse. Oh, it's the village I come out from. What an excuse. Oh, it's my bloodline. What an excuse. There's no excuse you can give me or give to God that is accepted. God will show you examples in the Bible of people. I will, do you want to talk about um, um, this guy? I've forgotten his name. Jephthah. 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 That was an outcast. The son of a harlot. And they killed him out. And he fought the oppression. And he came back and he became their leader. Or do you want to talk about Moses? that became a murderer that was supposed to be in prison he went away after 40 years he came back as a ruler as a judge as a as a deliverer god used him you have no excuse or do you want to about moses who was a stammerer and yet god still used him to deliver israel out of egypt even though he's, he was still a stammerer. You see, you have no excuse. You must fight the oppression. Don't allow that oppression to overcome you. Don't allow that oppression to have an upper hand over you. Don't allow that oppression to overcome you. Don't allow that oppression to win the battle. You must win the battle. Somebody say, I will fight the oppression. Somebody say, I am fighting the oppression. Somebody say, I will conquer the oppression. You must fight and conquer. Someone say, I will fight and conquer. You must fight and conquer. You must fight and conquer. Tell yourself, I will fight and conquer. Never give up. Never give up. Why am I in a nutshell? For you to, to get your change, for you to be determined for your change, you must fight and conquer. You must fight and conquer. You must fight and conquer. Stop giving, even for your marriage, you must fight and conquer. Even if your husband is having affairs, you must fight and conquer the strange woman and get your husband back. Don't say, I am giving up. Don't say that is me. No, you must fight. Your person has come to attack your marriage. If it's sickness, you must fight against that sickness and come against your marriage. You must, it's an oppression. You must fight. Someone say, I must fight. You 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 must fight. I will fight and conquer. Don't just fold your arms. You will fight and conquer. You will fight. And this woman came out fighting. She came out fighting. They said, she, 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 uh, but she's severely oppressed by a demon. She came out fighting against that oppression. Like, you demon, enough is enough. This, my daughter has a destiny. This, my daughter has a womb that she needs to produce people, children that will become mighty in the land. This, my daughter, you will take care of me in my old age. This, my daughter has a destiny. You demon, you will not stop it. Don't allow anything. To stop you, you must fight the oppression. You must fight the oppression. You must fight the oppression. Even if you are in a church, a pastor, and people are rising up against you, you must fight the oppression. Don't let anyone silence you. I shall not be silenced. 
Prophet I shall not be silent. I shall not be silenced. There's something that God has put in the inside. Look at Paul. Paul fought. So people came, wanted to silence him. No, they had to circumcise. No, they had to circumcise. And he went and he fought in front of the apostles and the elders and they laid their case and they agreed with them and said, okay, we are not laying any other thing on them. We are not forcing them to circumcise. We are not forcing them to follow the law of Moses. No, let them just serve God and stay away from what is strangled and what is sacrificed to idols and they will do well. Simple. So Paul had to fight. The oppression. You see, you have to fight the oppression. In the days of Jesus, Jesus came fighting the oppression. He fought the oppression against the Pharisees, against the Sadducees, against their, their, their elders. He fought against the chief priests. He fought against the Levites. All the oppression that they were oppressing people. He fought against them. Said so, no, that is not it. You are people that you like uh, salutations in, in 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 places. You are people that will say, "Do what I do, but not what I say." You are people that want honor. He fought the oppression, and that's why they hate it because Jesus exposed their secrets. What am I saying to you today? Fight the oppression. Fight the oppression. Don't allow anyone or anything to silence you. This woman did not allow that demon to silence her. She did not allow the oppression to silence her. She did not allow those powers to have their way. She told them, enough is enough. My daughter must be free. Enough is enough. My destiny must arise. Enough is enough. I must move forward. Enough is enough. I must make pro- I don't know what your enough enough is. So I'm telling my own. Say, tap, tap your own out. Enough is enough. I must make progress. Enough is enough. I must prosper. Enough is enough. I must succeed. Enough is enough. I must move to my new house. Enough is enough. I must move forward. Enough is enough. I must go all over the world to preach. Enough. You say your own. I'm saying my own. Enough. Because if you don't say enough is enough and fight the oppression, hmm, guess what? You must fight the oppression. Let me tell you one story and I will end. I remember many years ago, about maybe 10 years ago, I met a man of God in Italy. I went to, an, to a conference in Italy and we, we preached together. He came, he saw the conference on online and he came and he was from India. And then they had a big conference in India and he invited me to come and I went to the Indian embassy to go and apply for visa. The first time they rejected me. I said, mm, devil, you're a liar. The next time I went again, do you know what? I saw this woman, very straight. I saw this woman, this woman said no. So I went and began the line again because she did not stop up or anything. I went and started the line again. And in the line, the crucible the of the woman was about two doors away from, from the other man I went to. So somebody was, uh, I was supposed to go to that same woman. I told the person behind me, just go. So when somebody was free, two doors away from her, I went there. As the man was writing, and I looked up and saw <laughs> and saw me. I told the man, no, 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 no. I don't know what she spoke their language. And the man said, sorry, sorry, I cannot give you visa, this and that. Uh, bring this, bring that, bring that. I had to fight the oppression. I went out, I brought everything they wanted. And when, by the time I came back, the man was not there. What do I want to bring up? Fighting the oppression. The man was not there. And then I went and they gave me the visa. And I went to India for the first time. And guess what? When we began to, it was a big field, not less than, I'm not exaggerating, I don't like exaggerating, not less than 40,000 people. And we put to them, and many of them were saved, and they were seen. And that's not what I want to bring up. Through going to India, guess what? God opened doors for me to go to South Africa, to go to America, and to go to, I can't remember, another place, I can't remember. And God, so I began to think to myself, that, thank God I fought that oppression. Thank God I did not give up. Thank God I did not allow the devil to use that woman against me. If the devil, if I have given up in the beginning, guess what? All those doors that God opened would not have opened. What am I saying? You must fight the oppression. You see, anything we say, we say is is for you. We've experienced it. We've gone through it. And we don't want you also to be stuck in it. That's why it, it looks as if I'm so serious about this that you must fight the oppression. Anytime you are knocking on a door and there's opposition, be determined, knock the more. Someone say, I'm knocking the more. Knock the more. You must fight the oppression. Whatever demon, whatever power, whatever authority is behind the issue around you, you must bind that demon and cast to hell and you must have a clear way. The door must open by fire. Hmm. The door must open by fire. Tap it out. The door must open by fire. One thing, as the great, one of the graces that God has given to me is that 
I don't give up. Oh. I never give up. Over any issue in this world, I don't give up. I don't give up. Once God gives me a green light and there's a way there, I will persist, I will persevere, I will pursue, and the door will be open. Even if there's no key, God will give me one key and will open and the door will open by fire. Why? Because I know that there's something behind that door. That's what I'm telling you. You must fight the oppression. Let me tell you something. Nothing comes easy in life. If you are believing and expecting uh, all your blessings to come on a platter of gold, hmm, don't deceive yourself. You must fight the oppression. You must fight for your destiny. The Bible says, um, my her daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. The daughter was severely, or she did not allow the oppression to suppress her. Somebody say, my, the oppression would not silence me. The oppression would not silence me. The oppression would not silence me. Fight the oppression. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor. Accept our thanks and Jesus. Name. Thank you for your word you have heard today about fighting the oppression. We come against every oppression in our lives. And no matter where, no matter how, no matter how long, we destroy them. We pull them down right now in the name of Jesus. We demolish and pull down every oppression over our lives right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, have your way. Give us the grace to fight every oppression that comes against our life and turn our lives around for a miracle. We shall end with a praise. We shall end with testimony. We shall end with promotion. We shall end with success. We shall end with breakthrough. We shall end with change for the best in our lives. Father, we honor and we bless you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now, if you know and you believe that you have conquered, write it out, type it out. The oppression is over. The oppression is over. The oppression is over. Now, before I forget, if you're out there, you're not giving your life to Jesus, the best miracle that can happen to any individual is for them to give their life to Christ and you'll be able to overcome the oppression of the enemy. If you want to do that, just say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you. I know I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. I am sorry for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart and be my Lord. Empower me, Lord, and save me from the devil. Forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me. Write my name down in the book of life. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me the way I am. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. If you want to know more about um, being born again, if you don't have a church you are going to, you can go on our website, that's website on the screen, gives you more details, and God will bless you. And if I live outside London, outside London, outside UK, look for a Bible believing church to go to. Tell the man and woman of God, you've just been born again. You want him or her to nurture you in the way of the Lord. And I know they will nurture you in the way of the Lord. And God will continue to bless, increase, and prosper you right now and marvelously in the name of you. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. There's somebody who has an ear pain. God is telling me, you have ear pain. You have ear pain. I see the power of God touching and healing you. Now, after this program, get olive oil, raise it and call Jesus three times. I know that ear. That ear. I know that ear. I know the ear for five nights. I know the ear for five nights. I know the ear. Five is the number of grace. I know it for five nights. When I know it, the pain will go and make sure you share your testimony. Make sure you share. If that is you, tap it out. Ear. No more air pain, no more air pain, or no more pain, no more pain, no more air pain. Touch it, raise the bottle, cut your skull, and at your ears for five days or five nights, whichever one, and the pain will disappear. By stripes, you are healed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Quickly, I want to give you our programs that comes up online, our online programs, as you can see on the screen, our online program every Sunday. We have our worship service at 10 a.m. on this same Facebook page and same YouTube um, channel by the grace of God. We have Sunday service at 10 a.m. And in the evening, we have couples forum. Pastor Pugam and myself will discuss how we can live together in love, peace, and harmony. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus. And then on, on my wife has, on Wednesday, we have Bible study at, um, Bible study at 7 p.m. 
you join us it's a trackers tomorrow it's an active and god will bless you in jesus name and on friday we have prayer meeting on this same channel and facebook page and we have um friday prayer meeting at 7 pm join us and god will bless you and then my wife has here my cry every sunday at 6 a.m mondays at um 11 p.m and wednesdays at 1 p.m so she's coming tomorrow by god's grace and she also has seven days of power prayer power um um seven days i think sunday monday tuesday wednesday so wednesday will be the fourth day so it's coming up tomorrow again but because i've got at 6 a.m join and you'll be blessed in jesus and then we have prophetic hour like this every tuesday at 9 p.m join us and god will bless you and resurrection prayers hour every thursday at 9 p.m i tell you your life shall never remain the same again the god we are serving is a mighty god and this is going to begin to work wonders and miracles in your life and please don't forget to like our facebook page love our facebook page and share our facebook page which means that when you finish this program and you press the back button it takes you back to body of Christ center page please you see follow it click on follow you want as many followers as possible click on follow you and then that means that you are following so that when we are coming on anytime you are coming on you get notification and god will bless you in the name of you and get your friends to also follow this facebook page. send the invitation to them copy the link when it comes up send it to them and just say follow it follow it follow it and god will bless in case and prosper you in jesus and for those who are on youtube for those who are on youtube please subscribe to our youtube channel that is it on the screen subscribe to it and also press the notification button so that that will give you notification when we are coming on and god will bless in case and prosper most of our programs are both on youtube and facebook so join us and god will bless increase and prosper you all in the name of you continue to arise and shine prosper and make so by god's grace we are looking forward to seeing you tomorrow by the grace of god for our bible study god will bless increase and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Oh, Jesus, I want to pray for you before I go. Father, we thank you. I pray for all our viewers that you will bless them in Jesus' name. You begin to work your wonders in their lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. God is telling me to tell those who are watching, anoint your hands for the next three days. Get olive oil. Raise it up. Call the name of Jesus Christ three times. Jesus, Jesus. You get your olive oil. Call Jesus three times. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Anoint your hands for three days. I said, what is this God for? And God says that, he wants to place blessings and success in our hands. Blessings and success. For those who are believing God for jobs, you will receive it. For those who are believing God for contracts, you will receive it. For those who are believing God for breakthrough, you will receive it. For those who are believing God for promotion, you will receive it. For those who are believing God for hands in marriage, you will receive it. No matter, you know, hands is what we use. For those who are believing God for blessings, for success, to handle money, to handle blessings, that's what God says it's for. So you're not yourself. Raise the olive oil up, call Jesus three times, and ask yourself for three days, your hands, your hands, your, your hands for three days or three nights, just three times, um, three on, on for three days, and there will be a miracle. Before the end of this year, you will handle great things. You will handle great success. You will handle turnaround. And if you believe that, just type out hands, 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 hands. Type it out, hands, hands. Let's not forget that somebody, your business is wavering once you anoint your hands your business will go higher your business will go higher whatever the implantation of the enemy is in your business will be uprooted by fire and your business i see shooting up you know when the graph shoots up i see shooting up i got to work a miracle for you father we thank you let your name be glorified bless everyone who has viewed bless elders who have shared let your name be glorified father we honor and we bless you in jesus precious and wonderful name we pray before you go I have an important announcement, please. Before you go, I'm going to put that on now. I have an important announcement before you go. Very important. Don't forget, by the grace of God, that it's going to come on now, that we are going to be talking about um, causes and foundation, by the grace of God, like breaking the cycle of causes and destroying the evil foundation, family foundation. And this is Friday, the 13th of November at 12 midnight. We want to break and destroy causes and foundation. You know, the two are linked together. And the theme is, it runs in the family. So whatever runs in the family will be destroyed. 
somebody type that out. It runs in the family. It runs in the family. So it's going to be on our Facebook page and YouTube page also. The Bible says, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Christ redeemed us from the curse of the Lord by becoming a curse for us. For this region, curse is everyone who is hung on a tree. So, I'm going to use those two passages to destroy and work against any curse in life. How do curses come by? How can we avoid these curses? How can we fight against curses? We will know all by God's grace the 13th of November, grace of God. Make sure you join us. Don't miss it. God will bless you. Spread the news. Causes and foundation, and God will begin to work His wonders. And once again, thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. We appreciate you. Thanks for staying with us, for being with us. God will bless. I declare and decree the grace and mercy of God shall be over your life. So, talk about the grace and mercy. I say once again, the grace and mercy of God shall be over your life. Once again, thank you very much. God bless you. You are blessed and highly favored. Have a nice night. Bye bye and bye bye.